here we are. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, Friday at the Tromsø International Film Festival, and I can wish welcome the director Olivier Asayas. Thank you. And here, uh, our Norwegian um, sort of critic, legend, uh, uh, film consultant of money. You have had many hats on your head, mm -hmm. Kalle Løken. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. You've here arrived here at the festival to mm -hmm. present uh, a retrospective of your work, mm -hmm. uh, and um, the selection of films has been concentrated on the relation to music mm -hmm. I've seen. How do you feel about screening retrospectives and, and, and this particular focus that the festival has put on your films this year? I must say that the afterlife of my movies <laughs> are uh, sometimes more important to me than their actual lives. I mean, you know, to, to, to me it's really um, stimulating uh, to have uh, movies re seen, watched again after the first commercial run because at the, and especially in connection with some of my other films because I, I've always had this notion that um, I that my movies do have interconnections and and uh, and uh, and the more they are they are somehow exposed uh, the better Mm. Uh, in, in the more satisfying for me, you know, it's it's uh, I, I, you know I, I I believe in the dialectics between movies. I believe in the confrontation of my movies because they they do have a dialogue. So mm. so um, whatever the angle, I'm happy with the dialogue. Music is a possible angle, and I'm perfectly satisfied with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kalle, you've, uh, you've talked with Olivier <coughs> earlier in your uh, work as a critic and you've seen his film over a longer period. How, how is it for you as a critic and as an, as a sort of, as an audience member to, to go back maybe during this retrospective, rewatch films? Mm. Well, it's interesting because I've followed you since uh, the beginning, uh, beginning of the 90s when mm. we screened uh, Cold Water mm -hmm. here in Tromsø mm. and I was one of the uh, you know, the one one of the programming mm. committee that started mm -hmm. this festival mm -hmm. 22 years ago, and then I remember we had cold water at, in the program, and that was probably the first film I saw mm -hmm. from your uh, from your work, mm. and uh, I was very interested at that time because I knew that you were a film critic. You were mm. more or less like me, mm. and I felt that uh, there was some mm. other. Uh, French directors at the same time mm. that had uh, this. Uh, I, I wonder a little bit. Was there a new generation coming up in mm. the late 80s, beginning mm. of the 90s? I, mm. I thought about uh, Xavier uh, Beauvoir, Beauvoir mm -hmm. and uh, Eric Rochard, mm -hmm. who made a film that I was very pleased with. Mm. And there was something mm -hmm. uh, with you because you were all into what I say uh, a new generation mm -hmm. working with the aesthetics of Robert Bresso, which is mm. one of my favorite mm. writers and directors. Mm. Was there any uh, there any was generation? No, uh, no. No. Honestly, no. I mean, uh, you know, you, you, you always end up having some kind of dialogues with the guys who make movies uh, at the same time. But it's... Uh, I, I always felt kind of... Uh, because I started making movies in the mid... 80s, right? Mm. Uh, Cold Water is my fifth movie. Okay. Um, w so, when I started making films, meaning making narrative, novelistic, independent films in the, mm. con in the, in the French context, it was pretty new. You know, it was uh, uh, the, the idea of um, of trying to deal with the thick of reality within the format of independent filmmaking, not second degree, uh, distanciated, whatever, but just be there with the characters. And uh, it, 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 you know, it's it somehow connected to the earlier generation. It kind of connected to the work of André Téchinet, whom mm. I worked with, with the work of Philippe Garel, of uh, Jacques Doyon, Benoît Jaco, who, you know, they are all my elders, but somehow, mm. I felt more connection to their work than to the work of the filmmakers my age. I felt pretty much on my own. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the really the one person whom I have had a constant dialogue with, and who is like, um, who is the, who has been like a, a constant stimulating presence for me is Claire Denis. 
Claire. Mm. Claire is a little older than me, but she started making movies more or less at the same time. And uh, I, I thought we always both had the same vision of where, uh, which new areas French cinema could go and 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 and, and we, there has been a constant exchange I mean you know it's it's really like a, a we've been answering uh, we've been di having again I mean, I'm using this word dialogue but mm. ultimately it's uh, it's something that's kind of important you, when you when you make movies you make your own movies but you're also uh, discussing the mm. possibilities in filmmaking you you're, you're, you're raising the challenge, mm. you know, it's, uh, so, so, yeah, Claire, Claire to me was that inspiration. Mm. Mm. What, about, what about the connection to Bresson? If oh, Bresson, yeah, to no, to, to, to me, yes, yes, no, the great filmmakers are, um, they just show you the way in the sense that you don't have to imitate the style, but they kind of show you the way because they give you the, proof that movies can go into those areas that you know that the the art form you are using has the potential to go as far as someone as Bresson has taken it or as far as someone as Andrei Tarkovsky has taken it. Mm. Mm. It's interesting that you mentioned Claire Denis. She was just mm. very recently last or the year before presented yeah. with mm. a retrospective mm. here. So the audience of Tromsø has now had had a chance to create its own dialogue mm -hmm. between the, yes. the films, the cinema mm -hmm. of Claire Denis and uh, mm -hmm. Olivier Assayas. Make, and makes complete sense. And many of those films were mm -hmm. also never released theatrically mm -hmm. in Norway, so it's kind of a discovery there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the element of discussion and dialogue is quite interesting. Also, if we step back and look at the, mm -hmm. your, the start of your career, which mm -hmm. was as a critic, you mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. and, and you can maybe you can tell us a little bit about sort of the, the, the entry into criticism mm -hmm. and also the further going I into... Uh, I, I'm, I'm a little... Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm always very cautious with the word film critic. Right. I, 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 I'm not sure I ever considered myself as a film critic. I was a would-be filmmaker, you know. I mean, or, or I, I was, you know, if you want to put tags, I mean, at the same time when I was writing for Cahiers du Cinéma, which is, which is a short period of time, right? It's, a, it's a January 1980, to like November 1985 uh, and um, during that period I was writing screenplays mm. I mean most of my activity was really about being a screenwriter mm. uh, specifically for André Tachiné I wrote two films with him uh, but Would you but say that creating cinema can also be then creating the, the, the sort of conversation with yes. film so the mm. writing about film seems to have been also almost writing film yes yes of, of course I mean it's 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 a, a and a, you know and just I was also you know, making my own short films mm. so what I what I am saying that there was a constant back and forth between practice and theory and and also I I, 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 I considered myself more as a film writer than a film critic I mean because I was I mean I was making I was writing in the context of Cahiers du Cinéma which meant I had the possibility to mostly write about the movies I loved I, I very seldom wrote about movies I did not like it happened I did but but uh, it to, to me the process of writing was more about learning about cinema that's the, you know to me it was film school have you felt the same way about writing about cinema that it's it's sort of like a love letter, even when you're a critic. Cri I've been very privileged because uh, running a magazine that is passionate about mm. films, mm. I knew that I was only interested in mm. writing about mm. the films I loved. Mm. So I have never written a mm. bad mm -hmm. critic, mm -hmm. except for maybe a couple of Norwegian films that I really mm -hmm. had to write about. Mm -hmm. But certainly, uh, one of my ideas as mm. a film critic and a film editor of a mm. film magazine was that I wanted to find films abroad mm -hmm. that I wanted to take home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was not a distributor, but uh, mm -hmm. I could write about them. Mm -hmm. And there were distributors that were mm -hmm. interested in my mm -hmm. writings. And I picked up films mm -hmm. that no one saw. But, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. yeah. there was so many good films out there mm -hmm. that really had to be shown. Mm -hmm. We had the film festivals, 
and certainly sometimes we also could have them in distribution. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was mostly European films. Mm -hmm. But uh, after a while, it certainly also went into Africa mm -hmm. and to U.S. independent films mm -hmm. and also Asia after a, after a while. But also mm -hmm. this this heritage of sort of discovery and mm -hmm. creating mm -hmm. uh, in some sort of you know an inseparable mm -hmm. way is uh, I think for my generation also very inspiring to keep track on. When mm. the when the when the amounts of film and the amount of access to culture has mm. exploded in a way, mm. and it's it's almost difficult to, mm. to the jungle is even more prominent when you know everything. Everything is sort of um, catal catalogued, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you can't see it because yeah. there's so much of it. I mean, yes. I, this is mm -hmm. it's a wonderful conversation with you on the DVD for Imra Bep, where you mm -hmm. talk about discovering Hong Kong cinema mm -hmm. and, and going to Taiwan, and I'm. I'm a very fa big fan of Taiwanese cinema, mm -hmm. Edward mm -hmm. Yang, Hu mm -hmm. Xiaxian. And just, um, I didn't know, so mm -hmm. the, it, it was interesting. Maybe you can tell something about it for the people that don't know, but you had you made a trip to Hong Kong, to Asia, to... Yes, yes, well, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long story, but <laughs> yes, I mean, you know, I was uh, um, certainly closely involved in the international recognition of, the, of Taiwanese cinema, be also because I was lucky to be the first Western writer to write about those movies, about, you know, and so I, 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 I was, uh, uh, I, I, I contributed in their being shown in France first and, inter and then internationally, and, uh, I, and, and I've remained, you know, friends with, uh, with that generation of Taiwanese filmmakers, which whom uh, we, we, we were talking about, um, you know, uh, this notion of generation and uh, when I started making films I felt closer to the Taiwanese filmmakers oh. than to the French filmmakers of my generation mm. because they were dealing I, I felt that Ho Shao Shen or Edward Yang were dealing with modern reality Mm. In, a, in, a, in, in an interesting way, you know, at that time, you know, I mentioned uh, Carax, but Carax was dealing with some kind of Jean Cocteau fantasy mm. world, <laughs> which, 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 which I, you know, I kind of, I thought it was interesting, but it was not what I was looking for in cinema, not, mm. not, not, not my thing. Mm. And uh, uh, um, whereas uh, the, 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 the modernity and, of, of and also the roughness of what Ho Shao Shen and Edward Yang were doing, uh, you know, just gave me, I mean, they, you know, they were like elder brothers or something, you know, they kind of, uh, I, 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 I kind of, uh, I, I, I felt they just comforted me in my ideas in terms of what I wanted to do in cinema, it was doable, hmm. uh, and um, uh, so their presence and their inspiration has been, was, was very important for me when I started making films and, and, and I suppose that if I had not been a, write, a film writer, if I had not been given the opportunity of traveling to Asia, of going to Hong Kong, then Taipei, by the magazine I was working for, uh, I'm sure that my path in filmmaking would have been very different. So, you know, it brought me a lot of things that made me become whatever filmmaker I became. Well, and, and I think coincidence and mm. you know you will never know what will happen if, if not and but still mm. and, and looking at your films I think that the theme of, of finding the finding familiarity in the mm -hmm. foreign mm -hmm. or and, and the collision of languages mm -hmm. uh, Irma Vep may be an obvious example yes, with yes, the yes, actress. Course, I mean how do you how do you think this thematic thread was sort of evolved was it there from the beginning it's Did it no it was not there from the beginning it it was it was well well somehow it was because you know my first feature was uh, disordre you know it starts in the suburbs moves to Paris from mm. Paris moves to London and from London moves to New York that's one so, of the films so screening here <laughs> yeah. so it, and it had to do he has to do with music so I suppose that you know it's your whole world is in your first film in many ways you're not aware of it but you, you're, you're kind of stuck there you know you, know, you, you don't know that you have already mapped out your, but I was lucky lucky to map out some bigger uh, space than usual um, young French filmmakers so um, uh, yes, 
there was they ha, there was that dimension, but I was not yet using different languages. I was not so much dealing about uh, globalization or whatever. It's uh, um, I think it's. Um, um, well, you you mentioned Goldwater. I think it's when I made Goldwater that I consider my second first film, some mm. a blank slate, mm. where I did when, when when I decided to kind of start over and mm. you know just with making movies in a slightly different way. Um, and the, and the international recognition it gave me that kind of opened up for me mm. the the idea the desire the potential mm. of making uh, um, of making movies that had some dialogue with other cultures. Mm. It, it's because it's because well, um, uh, um, Cold Water had that mm. through my use of music. Oh. It, it's like the screenplay was the songs mm -hmm. during the a whole part of the film, like one third of the film, the screenplays, the songs that f come like one after the other, um, or the way I use the poetry of Ellen Ginsberg. Mm. So it just gave me a notion that uh, something in international youth culture or whatever um, was also some, was something I shared with so mm. many people who were involved in, in, in you know in, in, in independent filmmaking, be it filmmakers or critics, and it was some kind of uh, common language. Mm. And why not make movies that use elements that come mm. from uh, other film cultures? Mm. Why why not uh, you know uh, make a movie whose star would be from Hong Kong? Mm. Mm. Maggie Chung, mm. you know, why not try to put those elements and together because they belong to the same world, mm. to the same logic in modern filmmaking. So when you were discovering the cinema of Olivia Sears, what worlds was it portraying? Did you feel you were discovering a French filmmaker or, or an international filmmaker? Uh, with Cold Water, which was the first film I saw, it was definitely a, mm. a French independent mm. filmmaker. Mm. Mm. And I knew about uh, films before, but I mm. hadn't seen them. I, yeah. I saw Disorder here. Mm. So, uh, and that was very interesting for me to see the first film, because mm. the first film is even more mm. into this Bresso model. Yes, oh, totally, totally, yeah, totally. Yeah. totally. Yeah. Yes, and then and, and the second one even more so. I mean, you know, yeah. my, all my early films are yeah. overwhelmingly Bressonian. Yeah. But then I was, uh, I was mm. a little bit surprised when Irma Webb came, because mm. Uh, you were still what I call a young mm. French independent mm -hmm. filmmaker and suddenly you wanted to make a film about how hard it is to make a film. Mm -hmm. just and like how hard uh, it is to make it in France. Uh, yeah, and just like uh, Francois uh, Truffaut when mm -hmm. he made uh, La Nuit Américaine. Mm -hmm. It's um, different. It's different, you know, it's, it's uh, because in fact, it's not a movie. It's not a movie about how hard it is to make movies. It's a movie. It's, it's a movie about uh, how hard it is to get them right. Mm. How hard to make them function on some ambitious poetic level. Uh, it's uh, making movies. I mean, you know, when when you watch him, I suppose it's it's fun to make movies. It's 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 crazy. It's it's a uh, uh, it's uh, it's a way of. Uh, Mixing in real life visible and in invisible elements, mm. you know, mixing at the same time everyday life and fa and, and some crazy fantasy world where mm. again you can you you, you can make uh, uh, um, Jean Pierre Leo meet Maggie Chung, you know, or you know, it's yeah. it's a, it's a, it's it, they, they were they were never meant to be in the same film, yeah. and, and I put them in the same film because. You know that's because because it's interesting because it's fun because it's exciting because uh, because it, because it's something uh, it's 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 a way of making movies no one had re had really tried so um, um, but and I'm experimenting mm. um, La Nuit Américaine the the, the the La Day for Night the, the mm. François Truffaut film which I, which which I admire I mean I'm a huge fan of François Truffaut I worship him I think mm. he's a genius. Uh, and, I, I, and again, I but it really has nothing to do with him. It has nothing to do because it's it's an homage to the to the cinema of his youth. 
The film they are shooting, je vous présente Pamela, mm. yeah. you know, in, 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 it's a movie from the 1950s. Mm. It has nothing to do with modern filmmaking. It's more, mm. it's, no, it's nostalgia for the old system of filmmaking. You know, they're working at the Victorine studios in Nice. I mean, no one films, mm. filmed in the studio anymore at, at that time. So it, it, was, it was more about, uh, again, it, it, was, it was more a dream of what cine of how François Truffaut as a kid imagined cinema. Mm. Uh, it's uh, I've always uh, if uh, to me the the one movie about modern filmmaking I considered extremely relevant was Beware the Holy Horde, the Fassbinder movie, mm. which is somehow and sadly closer to the inner workings of independent cinema. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying it was a huge influence and I tried to stop, but still, it's, it's a movie I had in mind much more than, uh, much, much, much more than Day for Night. Mm. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if I want an honest uh, answer from mm. you, mm. were there any good idea to try to uh, remake uh, Louis Foyard's Vampire? Or yes. was it just for fun? It's a good idea, but it's extremely <laughs> difficult. Hmm. And, uh, and I think that, uh, uh, that René Vidal in the film, he manages to squeeze a three-minute film out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't be much longer than that, but mm. still he kind of achieves it. Mm. He does it in his own way. Mm. Such a, such he, make, he makes a compact three-minute punk rock version of, yeah. uh, of, of Les Vampires. So it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not a seven hour serial no. anymore, it's just the Webern version, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's very beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, so, so, so he kind of gets there. Mm. And you're, 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 you're grateful because mm. somehow you, you never really trusted him during the whole film and, and in the end you're like, well, actually he had a point, he kind of made it. Mm. And, and, uh, and, and also you can also consider that Maggie herself gives her own interpretation of it, mm. but through living it. Mm. It's, it's the other like meta modern version of what uh, Les Vampires is about. Mm. It's a, it's a, you can't really remake it, but eventually you can live it. Why not? Why not try it? That's what Maggie does. Mm. He, he, she, she, she does take the costume, she does steal the jewels, you know. Mm. It's, uh, she does the kind of dangerous things uh, Emma Vep herself would do. She becomes Emma Vep, mm. Mm. Which, which is again another modern version of the, of the, of the, of the, of the of Les Vampires. Mm. How much has the, the, the freedom to, to, to use or continue to experiment within the mm. filmmaking mm. that you've been producing? I mean, mm. how important has that been for you to, to continuously evolve? To, 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 to me, uh, cinema has to be uh, experimental. Mm -hmm. you, you always experiment. You experiment on a level or another. You, display, you experiment in uh, theme, in form, in... Uh, uh, you know, it's or 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 in length. It's uh, movies, in a way or another, they have to be challenging. They have to. They, they are about trying things that have not been done, or at least not that way. Oh. It's, it's 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 so boring to do, to make movies in the in the, in in a regular format. I mean, they have been made a million times over and over. That's what the industry is about. The industry, the industry is really about remaking the same movies over and over again. I mean, oh, let's make a thriller. Oh, let's make a comedy. Oh, let's make you know. And and it's 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 and I always think it's it's like childish. You know, it's really like oh, I love those movies like this. That movie. Let's try to reproduce it. Let's try to find the the the, the, the joy we have. Watching this, watching that. it's that's not what, what movies are about. I mean, movies are not about movies. Movies are about the experience of life, and and, and they are and the challenges of life, and and, and 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 they are about trying to reproduce in film your experience of the world, and 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 it's never. I mean, I I always make my movies like. I mean, I, you know, like if there had been no movies before. Mm. Like, you know, I, I, I really make a point, even when I know I could use it, to never, you know, I never watch another film as a reference. 
to what I'm doing. You know, it's, it's just I never ever in my life, you know, thought, oh, okay, next week I have to shoot this or that kind of scene. Let's see how this great master has done it. Uh, you know, it's it's. I don't want to know. I I, I I don't want to know. I want to approach. Okay, here's the person. Here's the camera. Let's try and find it, my own way of doing it. But are you able to erase the the collective? Film culture that you have been—I mean, it's still influential. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. I can, I can, because because when we when we are because what we are discussing is very basic, mm. because because you don't. Rem I mean, I, I don't watch movies analyzing how they are done. I have mm. no idea how no. they are done. I just I'm into the story. I'm into the characters and so on. so. Mm. So I, you know, it's it's uh, so so. I don't have like very specific memory of how actually uh, how this. Actual scene which I found beautiful mm. is actually is done. I, I don't remember. I don't remember how long, how it's cut, how it's constructed, and so on and so forth. So, uh, so no, yes, it's 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 kind of easy ultimately. I mean, you know, it's it's. Uh, I think your the film culture, n film knowledge, kind of uh, reminds you what not to do. What you should not do. I mean, you know, you you just you 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 you, you know what the morals I involve. What what are the morals involved? You know what is uh, you know you you kind of know the cheap shots you don't want to use. You, you it's 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 more uh, it's it's uh, it's um, it makes you aware of what you are doing. Mm. It's uh, you, you're less uh, naive about cinema. So that's why I'm uh, uh, mm. after Irma Rep. I've mm. been surprised by mm. a new Asayas film every time, almost. Mm. I was very surprised when you came with a uh, 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 what kind of uh, destination? Ah, this is a yeah, sure, sure. drama. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I was very surprised mm -hmm. when you came with Demon Lover. Mm -hmm. I was also surprised when you came with Clean mm -hmm. because I knew that you were mm -hmm. uh, not together with Maggie Chung mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how could you really mm -hmm. make, do make, this? make make an effort? And then you came uh, came with Summer Hours, which mm -hmm. was uh, mm -hmm. okay. This mm -hmm. is. This is the older mm -hmm. Asayas mm -hmm. looking back to the best time of his life mm -hmm. uh, at the at the summer house that you are now mm -hmm. uh, uh, in uh, in danger of losing. You know, y yes, that, I, that's mm. that's one one of the most nostalgic parts of your mm -hmm. filmmaking in summer hours. Because uh, I, I relate to it, it I relate mm. to the house yeah. and I relate mm. to the characters mm -hmm. and I, re I relate to to you know. Mm -hmm. uh, how can they manage to yeah, yeah. to get this through? Yeah, but, but you also relate to the kids, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> the, kids <laughs> in, the kids in the beginning and the kids in the end. Yes, of course. I, yes. I also relate in that mm. film is so much uh, mm. easy to relate to the shift of generation. Mm. I think mm. that's that's mm. possibly to me it was very very interesting. Also, uh, looking at art mm. in its in itself. I mean the, the sort of the relation to it's, the museum. It's 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 uh, the it's uh, yes. I mean it, 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 you know it's uh, um, you know. To, 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 to me, um, Summer Hour is many things, the same way as the MFAP is many things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, uh, Summer Hours is a reflection on the nature of art, the same way uh, the, sa the, the MFAP is. I mean, you know, they are, they are ultimately, they are, they are not that far away in terms of subject, subject matter. I use, a, I, I use another setup, I use another style of the characters, but ultimately they raise similar questions. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Always about you know about real li real life and art and mm. how they communicate how it so yeah I, but but it's 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 about uh, you know but it's interesting that you mentioned the Destiny Sentimental because because ultimately Summer Hours is like the Destiny Sentimental meets the MFAP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I was, so, I was talking about uh, you surprising me with uh, Destiny yes. yes. Sentimental yes. and Demon Lover, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah. But also, as we started that yeah. talking, you said your films have a dialogue with themselves. Uh, yeah, within, yeah. With themselves. Yeah. It was the other day I was talking with uh, Robert Gedigian, mm -hmm. uh, a filmmaker. I've yet to discover mm -hmm. uh, his filmography. I've mm -hmm. just seen his recent film, the mm -hmm. opening film here. But uh, as we talked about his uh, working method, obviously the, the heritage between the actors yeah. and the play, sense of place. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like one bigger story yeah, taking yeah. place it, in it, between it, the... Yes, of course. Of, of course. Uh, no, no, but Robert, Robert Gedigian is someone who has always functioned with the same Actors, the same mm, locations, yes. and he's he's been he's been uh, uh, you know uh, um, exploring his own world. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've 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 always tried not to be trapped in my own world, mm. world, 
and and, and it does, uh, 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 you know, and I think that you know, great artists find it, uh, find the whole world in their own small world. But yeah. I've uh, but I've I've always uh, uh, used cinema to explore the bigger world. Mm. I, I've I've always ex I always had the notion that my world was too small, and I, I, I always wanted to kind of expand it and, uh, uh, and 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 explore new layers of reality, explore new con interconnections within the layers of our experience. Well, there's a, there's nomadic uh, there's a nomadic sense to many of your characters. Let's yes, say yes, Carlos it's true. and mm -hmm. Asia Argento's character yeah, in yeah, Boarding mm -hmm. Gate, yeah, yeah. continuously shifting. Mm -hmm. I have to survive, then I have to move. I have yes, to e yes, yes, yes. So yes. will you continue to explore this? You think in the Again, I mean, it's movies uh, have to be challenging. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I it's, uh, it's uh, movies have to. Uh, uh, I, I, I need movies that take me to places I did not expect. I, I just need to be. You, you said you were surprised, but I need to be. It's, it's because I'm surprised myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's. Uh, I need to. Uh, uh, um, I just hate the security of knowing how I will shoot this film, how, how I, you know, it's how I will use elements I'm familiar with, because I just, it gives you a false sense of security. Mm. It's, uh, it gives you, uh, uh, it, it, it kind of, you, it's, it, it, it kind of, of, of uh, uh, it's 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 not exactly like an anesthetic, but uh, somehow you know it's it's. Uh, I, I I want to be scared when I make films. I I, I, can, I, I make, can you be scared also when you're writing the scripts? Or are you? It, I, it's, 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 I, I, it's it's when I'm writing. Um, um, uh, um, uh, 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 I'm, Having fun. I'm having fun, including. I mean, having fun with myself. Hmm. Like, like you know, I'm reading this and, and I'm, I'm writing this. And how is he going to get away with this? <laughs> 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 you know, I, I, it's schizophrenic. But I, I'm kind of uh, also having fun in inventing. Uh, situations. Uh, narrative logics that uh, you know are stuff I know I won't be uh, comfortable with. Mm. So and 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 it's because I, uh, you know, I approach the film. I start working on the film without any clear knowledge of where I'm going, what the film will look like. It's only after like a, almost a week into the film. That I start to understand, to understand what the film will look like. I never have a preconceived idea of what the film will look like. I have no idea how I will shoot it. I have no idea, what, you know. But but then, the the, the 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 film kind of finds it by itself. I let the film come to me, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, I and, and and gradually I realize how the whole thing functions, and and I can. Uh, Sharpen it, as uh, you know, and focus it as, as as we move on. I know. I know we have to sort of sum up quite. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think the three of us could possibly mm -hmm. talk for a long, much longer time. But yes, but yes. just to conclude, I say uh, this: the audience of Trumso has had the sort of like a long relationship with you. Now it seems as a filmmaker, going back to mm -hmm. Cold Water and now mm -hmm. with the retrospective, um, would you would you return with your future films here? You think? Oh well, yes, with pleasure. I mean, you know, I just uh, I've, I've been here like 24 hours, so I'm not. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's not like I'm familiar with uh, with, with Trumpster, but it, it's uh, I, I, I yes. I mean, it's it's a very, uh, you know, it's it's a very warm, welcoming, and uh, uh, film festival with, with with you know with 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 a very warm audience. Mm. So so yes, I mean, you know, it's 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 the it's the kind of situation where you're really happy to show your films when you. I wish to meet you again here in the future with your film. I'm sure you will. And, uh, <laughs> thank you very will. much for your time. Talk, uh, thank you, Kalle. Uh, I hope you. also to meet you constantly every year of here course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> to continue all these conversations. But it's, uh, it's great and we look forward to going to see your films throughout the weekend here in Tromsø. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kalle.